podcast called uh, Dove Jelly Sun Podcast. He probably doesn't remember this at all. Yeah, we work together. It's easy. This is kind of real. Like, holy shit. And so it's really cool to get to be a part of that. Yeah, you know how it is, bro. Hey, when you... You now tune into the biggest ever. When I hit it to take part, when I hit to take over. <laughs> I don't remember that. That's crazy. What's up, everyone? We're back to episode 142 of Dub Jelson Podcast. Joining me all the way from Japan, uh, part of the to- Tokyo Alpha Rock, uh, Wisconsin alum, Jordan Taylor. Jordan, how are you? Good, man. Appreciate you having me. Glad to be hey, here. Man. Thank you so much for coming on, making time to do this. Um, like I mentioned, you're over in Japan, hooping. Um, so, I mean, in the midst of like your 10th season over there, I mean, how has your career kind of progressed and, and changed from when you started in overseas basketball? Um, man, one, your body, you get old and your body, your body starts hurting. It hurts to wake up sometimes and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I think you just kind of, as a basketball player, you just kind of slow down. The game kind of slows down to you. Um, you become more, you become more grateful and more appreciative. And I guess start to kind of enjoy, um, enjoy the things that maybe before you put pressure on yourself about or or what have you like I know not to compare any of us to Tom Brady or LeBron but you know I think it's kind of interesting to see them the older they get just on Instagram they kind of talk about themselves like their their demeanor just kind of changes in my opinion like they just kind of open up they become more loose and they're just clearly having more fun and they kind of just don't care anymore in my like for lack of a better term um so yeah, that that's one thing, and um, you know, obviously, I've had a lot of injuries throughout my career, so it's been there's been a lot of frustrations. But you know, you find uh, find out a lot about yourself being overseas and being, especially being injured overseas, um, over ten years, ten eleven years. So yeah, I mean, I think Tom Brady earned himself like a a ton more fans when he went to Tampa, just because he was yeah. kind of more open with with everybody on social media, and people really got yeah. to see it, see who he actually is as opposed to just some dickhead who's playing for New England with Bill. I mean, people hate them. Um, I'm from Indiana. I'm a Colts fan, so they're not too fond to me. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Peyton Manning guy till I die. That's uh, that's my grandfather, actually. Uh, he was a huge Peyton Manning fan, huge Colts fan. Even he's from Racine, Wisconsin, but a huge Colts fan. So I'm Peyton Manning all the way. So when Tom Brady started uh, – I mean, you respect Tom Brady, but it's like, nah, Pey- Peyton's the GOAT to me. So five MVPs trumps the, the, trumps the team award. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, but, yeah, like you mentioned, it is really cool to see guys, especially later on in their careers, just being more open because they're not, like, they're not stressed out about the things that they could say. And I feel like that's that's mostly the, uh, the super successful people. I mean, uh, people that I – mean, there's a ton of guys that play, like, 10, 12, 14 years in the league, maybe they're not like superstars like LeBron, but I mean, even them, I mean, they're, they're going to be more open and, and just loose, like you mentioned. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And then, I mean, is there anything that you've realized uh, going since, since you went pro that you didn't really consider previously about, I mean, either the overseas basketball life or anything like that? Oh, is there anything I didn't consider? Uh, <laughs> man I, I shoot, that's a good question um I yeah I guess there's a lot of things I didn't consider for one I didn't ain't no way in hell I thought I'd be living outside the U.S. for 11 years of my life like going, going back and forth um you know I've I've met people I, I think you just kind of realize how similar you know how similar cultures are but how different cultures are at the same time and, you know, like I'm in I'm in Japan right now and it's probably the furthest thing from American culture, uh, Japanese culture. But at the same time, you know, if you, uh, you look out my window, you can see Tokyo and, you know, it looks like New York City. Mm. But then just the way people act and behave is is 100 percent different. So it's like it's just it's funny to see the influence that people get from each other um, and how different we are. But at the end of the day, it's just people are just fundamentally the same. People are chilling, they're going to work, they're relaxing. Most people most people like basketball, but at the end of the day, they don't really give a damn about basketball because it doesn't affect their life. So um, this thing that we take so seriously uh, is, I don't, it's, it's not trivial, but it is, it's, it's trivial. Like it's something for us 
um, that people enjoy and we can make the money we make and do what we do because of the fans. Mm. Um, but, you know, at the same time, there's so many things that are bigger than basketball, which, again, is, I guess, a part of growing older and, and, and growing up. Um, so beyond that, there's, shoot, I, I guess I go on and on, uh, go on and on. But I guess that's one of the things that has kind of become transparent to me throughout my career. Yeah, I just realized this, but there's no way in hell that one of the, I forget what YouTube channel it was on, but the, the dude that kept saying bing bong. And all that, I mean, that's blown up here. I don't know if, if you've got to that, but like, but like that's completely different from what it would be in Tokyo. And I had John Octius. Um, I don't know if you guys are in the same league or. Um, yeah, I know Gio. Yeah, we played against each other last year. I talked to him from time to time. He's like, I think 45, 45 or an hour away from me. So I had him on and he, he kind of said that same thing where Tokyo is kind of like New York, but it's just like super clean and like. All the all the bad stuff is kind of taken out of it to an extent. Yeah, crime. There's no crime. There's nothing like that. Like it's like people are very reserved. You know, right now you go in the elevator, it's crazy. I be, I take pictures and people look at me funny sometimes. It's like says, "Please, no talking in the elevator." <laughs> and then, like, you get on the subway here, and people rarely speak on the subway. Like they're not loud. They're all just sitting there chilling for forty five minute ride on the subway. It's like not dead quiet, but you know, it's it's pretty relatively quiet. And it's just like if you talk and people are just kind of like looking at you. So it's it's just funny to see stuff and you you grow to appreciate people's culture and you try to be respectful and fit in. Um, but also, you know, we all complain about everything. So sometimes you're sitting here complaining about the stuff, but you appreciate the stuff you're complaining about too. So it's it's it is cool. It's a dope place. And there's a lot of places like that are that are um that I've grown fond of that are that are very different. Yeah, and you bounce around a little bit. I feel like that's that's pretty um pretty normal and when, when you go play overseas you kind of play in a country for a couple of years and then you go to another country or, or what have you um I mean how hard is it to kind of transition you you live in like Italy for a year for example and then you move to France and then you move to Japan and how hard is it to kind of adapt in that short amount of time to whatever culture you're going into yeah it's, it's tough it's, it's really tough um you know I'm a big uh one thing again that I've that I've realized or that I've um, kind of that I've learned, I guess, is that I'm an adaptable person, very adaptable. But it's it's tough. Um, you know, one, you know, you go. I was in Italy for a year and a half, and I made friends, and then I got injured, and I ended up going to Israel. And it was like I went to Israel like right after the the Gaza um, the Gaza conflict had ended, the first or ceasefire had uh, came about the first time in like 2014. I think I went there like a week after. And I didn't know what to expect. I was like, I was like, damn, am I going in? You know, you watch the news. I'm like, shit, am I going into a war zone? Like, <laughs> so it's like, like, where are my agent sending me? So you, when I get out there, it's like Miami. And that ended up being one of my favorite places. You know, you make friends out there. And then the next year, you want to make more money. I went to Berlin. I went to Germany. And it's just like, it's difficult because you get comfortable in a place. And um then you then you leave and it's not like you're leaving because you want to it's either because you know in my case I got injured or because you try to take a step up in in your career um so it's it's difficult getting it's difficult from a, from a living standpoint um there's no stability in it uh there's no there's no way to kind of maintain and uh well I shouldn't say maintain it's very difficult to maintain and solidify friendships and relationships like that um, fortunately for me, I have my friends at home and my family at home. I'm very close to, so um, it, it's really difficult. But at the same time, it's dope because you know I went to Israel and I, you know, I went to Shabbat every weekend with one of my with one of my teammates or one of my coaches, and they treat you like family, even though you've known these people for 21 days. <laughs> you know, they're out there like leaving food at your door and and doing that. You go to Germany and Berlin and. You know, you go to a, a pub and I'm trying to speak German a little bit and they're looking at me like I'm crazy for speaking German and they respond in English. So it's just like you go to all these places and it's, it's just it's just super dope. You know, I went to Turkey and I was like, I had no idea Istanbul had 14 or 16 million people or whatever, whatever it had. And I'm coming in on the on the landing strip or coming into Istanbul. And it seemed like the city went on forever. Like, I'm like, again, like, where am I at? Like, I have no, I'm just, I'm signing up. I look on the internet, <laughs> do a little research. And by the time I get there, I'm just like, oh, this place is dope. Like, this place is dope as hell. And, you know, you end up going out and 
meeting other Americans or Brazilians or different cultures. So it, it's difficult to to solid or to to uh, like I said to move around everywhere. But at the same time, um, the older you get, you kind of learn to embrace it um, on a social from a social standpoint. And then from a basketball standpoint, you know, for me, it was just very difficult because, I, you know, I went from my college career. I think I had eight surgeries in in nine years uh, after my junior year. So it's been it's been a grind mentally and physically for me. Um, but, you know, I love basketball um, and I've learned that I think you know, perseverance and and hard work is something that I've always prided myself in. But the perseverance through all the injuries and stuff and. And moving around has been something has been something that's taught me a bunch of lessons that I have forever. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, talking about those injuries, I mean, we don't need to go up and down the list of everything that you've kind of been through. But I mean, has that taken a toll on you mentally at all? Just knowing that, like, I mean, even a split second, you could be going through another rehab process, another surgery, things like that. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it, it t the biggest toll I think now is that. Uh, in the moment, it's just like, damn, you're fucking always, excuse my language. Um, you're always, <laughs> you're always moving, moving through a, a rehab process, like you said. Um, but then it's kind of like, you don't get really, you don't really get a chance to to work on your game the way you want to, because you're always working. You're always trying to get back to a hundred percent. You're always, you know, um, and for me, it's been lower body, like knee, hip, hip, ankle. Um, so the most frustrating thing has been, you know, I've never really got a chance to see uh, how far I could progress in my game because it's just I spent more time injured than than not, which is a which is a frustrating thing looking back on, especially in basketball because mm -hmm. you know at 32 you're essentially you're essentially 65 nowadays, so it's like uh, I mean your career is almost over, so it's it's a little bit frustrating with that, but you know it is part of the game, it is what it is. So, mm -hmm. and I don't know the kind of the age range of when people usually retire from overseas, but. I mean, did you see yourself playing this long over there? Like when you were when you were first coming out of college? Listen, I went to with my <laughs> AU team. I played for Howard Pulley. We went to Belgium and Amsterdam when we were like 16, 17 on the trip. And when we were there for nine days and we stayed at homestays and this lady fed us uh, meat and toast for nine straight days. <laughs> and my other two teammates were like, they stopped going down there because they were so tired of the food. My hungry ass. I was, I'm low key. I'm, I'm a big kid at heart. So I just went down there every day, ate like three, four, three, four pieces of just, just meat, just burger meat. <laughs> and uh, I swore I would never go back overseas in my life at that time. <laughs> so when we got back, we all sprinted to McDonald's. We landed in Detroit, sprinted to McDonald's. So I said, I'll never go back. So to answer your question long in a roundabout way, uh, yeah, I no, hell no. <laughs> I never thought I'd be over here for this long. You know, my rookie year, I almost, I almost, uh, I think I was maybe a month and a half in, and I was just sick because we got to this place called Bormio in Italy or in North Italy, close to Switzerland. And you know, Wisconsin, we're used to flying charter and you know all this other stuff in college. And we get there, and as soon as I get there, maybe two days in, they're like, all right, we have a preseason tournament, and you're taking an eight-hour bus ride from Rome to this place called Bormio. And I'm like, say what? Like eight hour, but like, nah. <laughs> so I, I was not messing with overseas. I'm, I went to the airport uh, my rookie year, like two months in, and my dad talked me out of leaving. I was just going to bounce. Like, I was like, I can't do it. Um, so, but anyway, yeah, no, not not for 11 years, but I'm, I'm grateful that I did. I'm grateful that, you know, I stuck out the hard times and it's, uh, it, it's been, it's been, it's been dope. Yeah, I've, there's a ton of stories of guys doing that. Um, a lot of guys that I know, per, like that I've had on the show or whatever, I've talked about that. And I mean, overseas isn't for everybody. It's a different animal over there. Yeah, it, it definitely is. It definitely is. I've made I've made decisions though. Um, you know, knowing myself that I thought you know in, in certain instances turned down money to be in a bigger city, just knowing my personality. Um, you know, I've been in Tel Aviv, Istanbul, Berlin, Tokyo, um, Rome, so. Most of this, I've, I've been fortunate and lucky to to play in the bigger cities, which which really changes your experience. Hmm. And I feel like it really forces you to to grow up. Going over there, you don't know anybody really. You might know a couple Americans on your team. You might have even like just heard of them. You don't really know them. Um, I mean, you don't know the coaches, and some of the coaches are, you know, what well, I'm not gonna say it, but 
you know what's and they don't care about you or or how you're doing i mean there's so many stories of people like not getting paid and getting treated like crap it's it's tough but has do you do you find that to be true that has kind of helped you grow not only on the court obviously but but off the court yeah no question no question i mean there's there's tons of horror stories um i think that you know honestly as an overseas basketball player you appreciate the horror stories hearing them because it kind of, um, you know, it lets people know the the realistic sides of it. But sometimes, you know, especially on Instagram now, like there's so many positive things that happen overseas too, with playing overseas, but I think people don't touch on as much. Um, so, you know, and I like one of the things is about overseas, I think it kind of gets lost is like when you play overseas, the, the local, the domestic players. So if you're in Italy, Italians uh, Jap- or Japan, Japanese, they're kind of the favored, they get, they get favored a little bit, like one, cause they're more valuable just from an economic standpoint in the league and two, because it's their country. So it's like, you're that, that's one of the hardest things I think more so than um, generally speaking more. So I, I haven't dealt with too many situations, not getting paid. I've dealt with a couple, um, but that's just kind of the thing. Like you're almost like the, like the workhorse, like you're, you're easily replaceable. You're more easily replaceable because there's more Americans that can take your job than there are Italians who can take, you know, than good Italians or good Japanese players or, or whatever. So, um, but that being said, like um, you, you grow up also just learning cultures, learning, you know, little subtle things. Like I talked about earlier, like, mm-hmm. like here, you know, it's, it's one thing. They're very, just very polite, very polite and very nice people here. And that go that goes a long way. It goes a long way on teams. It goes a long way with people. And it's just, um, you know, not to say Japan is a perfect country, but you really appreciate in this scenario, you really appreciate just how the respect that people have for one another here. Um, you know, like on the subway, you go up or you go on the subway and everybody, if you're standing on the subway, you stand on the left side of the escalator to go up and down. And if you're walking, you you walk up the right side and people don't really break they don't really break uh, rank and file here, which is, it's really, it's, it's being from America. It's insane to see. Cause it's like, damn, like you have virtually an entire country that just follows rules, which is like, there's beauty in that. There's probably drawbacks in that too. Right. Like there's ups and downs to everything, but it's just, it's, it's really amazing to see, um, to see that stuff. And it kind of opens your mind and, and allows you to, to um, reflect and, and I guess learn, have, have better perspective about the world and be able to, to understand people better, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite things to hear about is just, I mean, you guys going over there in different countries and experiencing those things, like like you kind of mentioned earlier, it's bigger than basketball. I mean, you're gonna take these experiences for the rest of your life. You're never gonna forget them. You're gonna tell your kids as kids or, or what, I, I mean, you'll have those memories forever, but did, I mean, what kind of preconceived notions did you have going in um were you just like like when you especially after your junior junior year at wisconsin i mean yeah. all american all big 10 all that stuff um were you like i'm not even gonna touch overseas i'm going straight to the league man i uh i, I was gonna leave after my junior year um and the lockout kind of deterred me mm-hmm. um just because you know as knowing being realistic i was i was told that, you know, you could go late first or somewhere in the second. Um, so just because of a lockout, like if I go second, then, you know, who knows what's going to happen, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, and then, you know, I hurt my ankle going into my senior year and just didn't go, just didn't go my way, which is cool. But my my preconceived notions were like, oh, shit, I, I don't belong over here. I belong in the NBA, like just like any, just like any 21, 21 year old. Um, I genuinely felt that I still, I mean, I still feel like, you know, I could play, I could play in the NBA, but what changed is like, you realize that there's, there's bona fide NBA guys. I think like there's dudes like LeBron or I even say they got like the Jamal Crawford level of guys um, who are just, they're just bona fide NBA guys. And there's a lot of dudes who like belong there. And then there's dudes who could play there, you know, if they, you know, they could be ninth, eighth, 10th guys or their friends over uh, overseas guys. And I think I kind of realized that's what, that's what category I was in, which was, which was great for me. And, and you get overseas and I thought all, I thought all Europeans were weak. Like I was like, man, these dudes are, 
these dudes can't play like that, like blah, 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 blah. And you get over there and you realize like, there's a lot of talent all over the world. Um, there's a lot of talent all over the world and it actually becomes fun. Um, like the year I played in EuroLeague um, was probably the most fun, one of the most fun years of basketball that I had. Um, so yeah, just definitely just thought that uh, the basketball overseas wasn't nothing. I thought the dudes were terrible. I thought, they, <laughs> I thought, thought they were slow. I thought all they could do was shoot. Any any stereotype you could think of about Europeans, that was what I thought. <laughs> the European basketball players, uh, that that I had it. So, um, and then you get over there and you realize, shoot, my I mean my first, my rookie year, I had a guy Gigi, Luigi Detome or Gigi Detome, um, and we ended up going to the finals. He was the MVP of the league, and he went to Detroit or he signed in Boston the next year after that. And he's one of the to this day one of the best shooters, if not the best shooter that I've ever seen. So, um, yeah, it was. It was, it was dope. You played with – I was looking at your pro ballers uh, yesterday. You played with a lot of dudes that were kind of like NBA draft prospects that were like kind of unheralded we didn't know much about. And now they're they're still in the league over there. Um, I mean, they're so young. Like, I don't even know how to say his name. It starts with an S and ends, ends his last name starts with a D. It's like second. Yeah. yeah. You played with him. You played with uh, Theo. Teo, yeah, Teo Maladon, yeah. yeah. I don't know how to say their names. But, I mean, yeah. I mean, those are some guys that we've heard about just, like, following the NBA or whatever. But, I mean, I've kind of gained an appreciation for overseas basketball recently with just having a bunch of you guys on. Um, I mean, there's a ton of dudes, especially if you're a college basketball fan and you look at some of the leagues. I mean, there's a ton of dudes that are playing overseas. Um, I mean, each and every, each and every year, like, for me, Jawan Johnson is one of my favorite players growing up. He's yeah. been overseas for, I don't know, similar to you, probably. Yeah, a couple years. Really but uh, But I, f- I forgot. I was going to bring this up. I saw the, the Shanghai Sharks. So they signed Jimmer. And yeah. They already had no Vonley and another import on the team. And they can't play at the same time. So they can only have one American on the, on the court. Have you ever heard of that? Is that, like, normal over there? Yeah, Japan had it uh, some years back where it was you could have, I want to say three imports, but it was like it was you could have two play in the first quarter. You could have two play for two quarters and one play for two quarters. So you could have three, but it was like so. And I think you I don't know, I may be wrong, but like for the first two quarters, you could have you could have two of them on there. And then for the, if you did that for the last two, you could only have one and you had to choose. And I think it was part of like strategy um, mm-hmm. on when to have people on there. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's an Asian, Asian basketball thing more so than European. Um, uh, the only place in Europe I can think of like that is Israel has, you can only have, if you have four imports, you can only have three on the court at once. Mm-hmm. So you have to have two Israelis on the court. But again, that kind of goes into, I think it, it, at one point in Israel it was four and one. And I think the Israeli players went on strike because they, you know, I mean, no disrespect, but the American players are just better. So, you know, they wanted to, they wanted to get more playing time. So they switched it to three and two. So, yeah. I was going to say, I had Sam Decker on a while back and his, he was playing in, I think it was Turkey. I think he's yeah. back there now. Yeah, um, he is. After he got cut by, I forget who he was, who was playing the for the Raptors. Or the Raptors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, he had, like – it was, like, him, Kamar Baldwin, who went to Butler. He's a local mm-hmm. guy. Um, Kyle Wilcher is All-American. Nick Johnson, who's an All-American at Arizona. I mean, yep. there's some teams over there, especially in, like, EuroLeague, that are just absolutely loaded with, with American guys. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, – my – when I went to Turkey, we had – some some of the dudes are a little older, so I'm not sure you would know them, but uh, we had, like, Dewan Summers from Georgetown. We had Scotty Hobson from – Tennessee we had Rakeem Rakeem Christmas from uh from Syracuse uh guy Richard Hendricks who was all-american at Alabama Alex Renfro who was really good at Belmont uh we, we were low we had T, this dude TJ Klein I think he was like the player of the year in uh in the 810 or in uh I forget which conference it was but either way we had we had we were loaded we were stacked and you know Rich would come in he'd talk about his team like they had a Euro Cup team not even Euro League with like uh, with like Nick Calathis and Malcolm Delaney, Anthony Randolph, Derek Brown, and himself, and it was like like they they were stacked, they were loaded. So like again, that's that's kind of you realize you're like damn, like overseas ain't no joke. Like it's uh, and honestly, you kind of realize that 
the NBA isn't all about talent. And that's not to say that every, every, I believe everybody in the NBA is talented, like beyond uber talented, but you just also realize that there's dudes outside the NBA who are very talented and, you know, the NBA is a business and you realize, you know, you, you hear stories and you talk to people and you realize what goes into certain decisions, you know, say like a guy like Teo, who's very talented, um, you know, hit the fact that he's 19 playing in EuroLeague might outweigh a 21 year old playing in the NCAA. So even though the 21 at that time, the 21 year old might be better at that specific time. So it's, just, I mean, it's just little things like that. And, you know, it's things that as a player, sometimes it makes you a little bitter. Like, I mean, you're like, damn, like, but then you also appreciate, um, you're like, all right, well, that makes sense. And it teaches you, it teaches you about business. Cause I think most businesses will run like that. It's about value. Right. So um, that's another thing that you kind of learn and, and realize. And uh, it's, it's, it's just dope. It's just a dope experience. And you just have to kind of, I think nowadays with the way the world is, a lot of people want to change things and this, that, and the third, which is great. Um, you know, I think people do want to change things for the better, but I think there's uh, some beauty in just trying to find a way how to move and how things are, you know, like not, not everything needs to be, not everything needs to be changed. And, you know, there's no such thing as, as fair for everyone. So, um, it's definitely, it's definitely something that, um, that you enjoy, that I've enjoyed learning. So. Hey, sooner you figure that out, the happier you'll be because yeah. <laughs> you, can waste, you can waste all the time in the world complaining about how unfair life is and i mean you could you could get cancer and be gone within a week you know what i'm saying it's like it's just life's life's not fair so you gotta you gotta figure it out but yeah i mean going back to kind of the thing with to um i mean that we saw that this year kind of with like josh giddy who was in australia i believe he came over and then someone like ayo jisumu who was all american all that stuff he went in the second round i mean he's killing it with the bulls right now yeah on a contender so i mean it, it's just one of those things you know yeah it's just fit fit situation timing like um just like just like anything else basketball to me is like a microcosm of the world like it, it literally if you pay attention it can teach you just about everything just about everything and yeah like it's it's uh i mean look at a dude like draymond like i played four years against draymond and i'm pretty sure i mean i i, I don't know if i've heard him say that but i feel like you had draymond you know, people call him triple single or whatever, and they talk, they talk <laughs> this and the third about him. But I don't know that, like, I don't, I don't think people understand the skill it takes to be able to fill that role, to be able to play with the dude like Steph Curry and Clay and KD, and like the temperament you have to be able to have, like the confidence you have to be able to have to play that role. But at the same time, like the the understanding that what you are, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think. People are always like, oh, imagine this guy in it. Well, that guy might be a little more talented, but I don't think he could do what Draymond does. Like, it's just – so, yeah, fit and, and all that is, is extremely important, so. Yeah, and Draymond runs his mouth, so I think that's – that's probably yeah. what I like him a little bit. But, I mean, <laughs> yeah, like you said, I mean, he, he kind of plays that, that Dennis Robin type role for the Warriors, especially when they were ripping off five titles or, or four titles in however many years. Is yeah. absolutely insane. But um, how cool is it to play with some of the other Americans, especially some guys in the um, in the Big Ten, like Adrian Payne, who I think it was a little after you. Maybe maybe you guys overlapped a couple of years, but then like like yeah. they lied to you as well. Yeah, no, that that was dope. That was actually like, that was my early year. So that was uh, that was that was crazy fun. AP was hurt, but you know he again he's one of those dudes that you play. Him and Scotty Hobson are probably the two dudes that I've played with where I'm like like there's no way. There's no way in hell these dudes should not be in the NBA. Like just ultra, ultra talented. Like there's nothing really that they can't do. Um, and for whatever reason, there's just there's just not. Like whether it's I don't know if someone didn't think they could play a certain role or, or whatever. But um, so a, like AP was this dude. He'll I, I I don't know. He used to do stuff where I'm like in the game and I'm just like, what the hell was that? Like that was crazy. <laughs> like same with Scotty. So. Um, it, it's been dope playing with them dudes and I knew them before, um, you know, uh, David Lighty, he, uh, he got ties to Minnesota. His, uh, his son is his son's mother is from Minnesota. So, you know, it's, I don't know if you saw that video of, uh, of D'Angelo Russell giving the little kid shoes. It was on the, running around the internet. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so I got to know, I got to know Dave and he's a good friend. Like, uh, and honestly, he's another dude where it's just like, 
you see it. Um, he's another dude where timing is, it was kind of time, timing kind of got him where he was kind of like a tweener. And if he was coming out now, you look at a dude like, I think Jay Sean Tate in Houston, like him and Lighty, I mean, Lighty does everything that he does. So it's just kind of crazy. And that dude's probably going to have a, a pretty successful NBA career. Um, and Lighty's done well overseas, but you know, it, it, it's been dope playing with them, uh, getting to know them as teammates rather than competitors. Like, and you just kind of realize how small the basketball world is too. And, um, you know, it's, it's just hella dope. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's guys that go, go back over to the NBA after, um, after playing overseas as well. Like I remember J.R. Smith in like 2012 signed with the Knicks. He's playing in China. I think Lance did the same thing this year. And then yep. J.R. goes on to start in the finals and, and all that stuff. But I mean, J.R. is a dog. So. Yeah. That's a little different, but um, did you ever play with any Wisconsin guys or play against them at all? Did I? This is a great question. Ethan Happ, for sure, played against uh, a couple of years ago, his first year overseas. Um, oh, played against Nigel. Played against Nigel uh, Hayes. Um, I'm trying to think. Like, I feel like. All the dudes that all the Wisconsin guys were not in were never. I don't think I was ever in a league uh, with them or, you know, from my age, a lot of the guys didn't go play pro for very long. Uh, the guys that were my age. Oh, Josh Gasser played against Josh in Germany. Yep. Uh, and shit, that might that might be it. That might be it. So. A few a of, yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys like John was in the league. Keaton, I never got to play against Keaton Nagaville. Um, they're played against Trayvon, but a lot of those dudes like Josh Goss or Ben Brust, um, those dudes only Tim Jarmus, they only played maybe like a year, three years, a year, year, two, three years overseas. So mm. now I want to go back to your Wisconsin crew because obviously that's that's how I was introduced to you, tormenting my boilermakers. Um, <laughs> I mean, from the job, what was it like to play for the legendary Bo Ryan, who's Who's, who's going down as one of the all-time greats, regardless of, of anything anyone has to say. Yeah, I mean, it was it was entertaining. It was dope. It was uh, it was informative. It was uh, it was it was a whole bunch of adjectives that I could think of. But it, overall, it was great. Um, you know, one of the reasons I went there is because I knew he wasn't going anywhere. And now with the transfer stuff, like we didn't have that obviously back then, and coaches moving around, it was like it was it was good for me. Like, I was like, all right, I know I'm gonna have the same guy for four years. So I know that, or th whatever, at three, four years, whatever it was. So I was like, all right, you know, I was never the most athletic. I was athletic, but not the most athletic ever. So I was like, if I can, my first year, I was like, all right, I can learn the system or whatever. I didn't even know what the hell the swing was, to be honest with you. Like, I, I just, I had fun at a football game and I was, I knew I had a chance to play. So I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I had people coming up to me like, oh, you're perfect for this swing. And like two years in, I was like, man, I like to run up and down. I don't know what you're talking about, like, <laughs> but but whatever. So, you know, you get there and you're like, all right, I can learn. I can learn the system. I have a chance to play a lot my sophomore year. And then, you know, hopefully all it takes to get to the league is just one breakout year for real. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, Coach Ryan, the way he saw the game, like he would be in the huddle and he wouldn't even use board or anything. And he had it. So he could, he was very good at teaching like probably one of the best teachers the best teacher that I've ever been around um, from a basketball standpoint you know he'd just be able to to literally talk you into something without a board using his finger and you would understand you would get the picture like all right yeah I got it which I, don't, I haven't I haven't seen at all from anyone else uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> you know he and then he was demanding too which was I think Again, that's one of those things as a as a 20 year old, sometimes you're just like, hey, shut the fuck up. But you, know, <laughs> you also you also appreciate it. It's like, all right, you get it. Uh, more, like, I think a lot of us got it. We understood it. Um, and he just, you know, and then on top of that, after, you know, he kind of he, he treats you as a player, he treats you with respect, gives you freedom, um, which honestly, that was one of the hardest things about going overseas is like you said, a lot of these coaches are micromanagers here or at Wisconsin, you know, I was, you know, he was kind of like, you know, be smart. Essentially, he was like that off the court, on the court. You know, if we wanted to go somewhere, it was like, all right, cool. We're, and then I got overseas and they're like, oh, no, we don't want you going out after 11. I was like, I'm a grown man. Like, what are you talking about? So for me, that was like, like, nah. So 
Um, but yeah, Coach Ryan treated you as a player, gave you respect, and but he also held you to a high standard. But then after you're done playing, like it was like there's really nothing that he wouldn't do uh, for players, um, to my knowledge. So, you know, he's he's a great great person, great guy. You know, all those college coaches, obviously they're a bit larger than life in their in their cities. So obviously that comes into play. Um, but Coach Ryan is, you know, I, I wouldn't have picked if I could go back and do it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't play for anybody else. He's a he's just a stand-up guy. And you know, Coach Guard, who's there now recruiting me, he's the same way, um, maybe even more so. Um, just just good people. And you know, that's all you can really ask for. Mm-hmm. Bo Ryan kind of reminds me of like what is those kind of turned it like both of those guys are legends. I mean, they're <laughs> The teams are always going to be good, or at least, I mean, even in their down years, they're going to have a winning record in the Big Ten. I mean, yeah. at the at the minimum. Yeah, I mean that's um, you know, I think in in Wisconsin's case, it's uh, with everything. I think just kind of the culture of the Midwest. I don't know if you would agree. Indiana, maybe not so much, but I think like Minnesota, Wisconsin, where I've been, is you know you you always have these teams that are going to be right there. But I think sometimes, which is great, and I think that's because some of the values and the way that they go about things, the way they work, and like you have the swing, and we're going to be right there because we're going to take care of the ball. We're going to do the little things and this, that, and the third. But I think sometimes you just miss that little bit of, you know, I don't think flair is not the right word, but that little bit of like uh, elite eliteness I guess that's going to push you over the top to get you to get you to the mountaintop which is why you know I was happy to see coach Ryan get to the final four because I think that kind of silenced some of that stuff and you know they really should have won it if Tyus wouldn't have been flopping the whole second half so (laughs) it is um but yeah so I think and yeah I look at the Viking the Viking I'm a Vikings fan it's like the same way I think like it's always they're always just right there but you never quite have the never quite have the the next level and I think in the Midwest people are kind of okay with that um which you know to me kind of stinks but it's also cool so um yeah I, that's kind of a random tangent but it's uh, it's, it's it's just interesting that I've noticed that about Midwest culture to me yeah and I I mean that's kind of across the Big Ten too like like Iowa, Nebraska. I mean, Nebraska kind of stinks at everything. Let's be yeah. real. But I mean, Wisconsin. I mean, Wisconsin especially, and and I mean to an extent Purdue. Um, if you don't have maybe that that one like five star that comes in, like for us, it might have been Swanigan or I mean Carson Edwards turned into a All American kid. He's a three star coming out of yeah. uh, Texas. But like if you don't have that dude, then it, it might be harder for you to have sustained winning. But like. I mean, I don't because that Final Four team for Wisconsin didn't really have someone that was like super flair. I guess I mean he had Frank, who was an All American, but I think I think that team it was kind of Sam like flair and flair is relative. But um, you know Wisconsin, we anytime we have a wing who's athletic, a lot of good things happen. Just <laughs> in that you know from Alondo to. Um, Ray, even guys like Ray Nixon with uh, with Devin, Devin Harris, and uh, shoot Sam, uh, now Johnny Davis. Like so, I think anytime Wisconsin gets an athletic wing, that's kind of because you know we always have the the PG who can make plays and big man who can shoot or do whatever. So that wing kind of sets the system off. But I think about the Pacers too. Like the Pacers are always just good. Like they're always they're never like <laughs> you're not. Like when Reggie was there, it's like, all right, they got close, but it's like they're always just really good. They never can quite get over the top. Um, and Michigan State, too, is as good as they've been, you know, been to Final Fours. I think they have, what, one national title, but they've been to like eight Final Fours, yeah. which is amazing. Um, so I don't know. It's just that's just an interest. That's just something I've noticed and I've always thought was interesting about Midwest culture. Um, but who knows? Who knows where if that'll change or what? <laughs> yeah, I can, I can totally see that, though. Yeah, I mean, dude, we got Johnny Davis is a kill. He's the best player in the Big Ten, in my opinion. I thought it was Ivy. I'm a little biased. I thought it was Ivy, but then he lit us up for like 38 in yeah. Mac. People <laughs> don't do that. I mean, that just solidified himself. No, Mac. Mackey was Mackey was hands down the toughest place to play. I thought it was uh, it's like it's something in there that I it, like your lungs just like 
tightened up in there. I don't know what it is, but I never got more tired in any arena other than, than Mackey. Like I was exhausted in that place. So it was, yeah, he, he, he destroyed job, but I thought Purdue going in was going to be easily the, the fate. Are they, they at first right now in the conference? We're tied for third with Wisconsin actually. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, they, they got, I don't, I don't know the entire college basketball landscape, but, uh, they have they should have a final four caliber team. Jaden Ivey's tough. Uh who's the, the big fella? Uh Williams, right? Travion Williams, Williams and Zach A D. Come on. Or, uh, yeah, Travion's not even starting. I mean, that's how kind of loaded we are. Oh, he's not starting this year. Zach E D, the he's a seven four sophomore. Four kid, yeah. Damn. And Travion Williams is uh he's he was all big ten last year, no? First team? Yeah, he's coming off the bench. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, and then I know you guys still have the the shooter, uh, Stefanovic, or is he gone? Yeah, he's still with us. Stefanovic, yeah. So I mean, they have, they have a really good team, but um, you know, it's it's uh, the Big Ten. The Big Ten, I think, is evolving in a way. Like I think it's become. I don't want to say a little more. I don't think it's more up tempo, but it's a little more free. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with Wisconsin, they they shoot the but Brad comes down and and gets in the lane and shoots. 15 foot fadeaways with 25 on the shot clock. I'm like, damn, where'd this come from? I, I need to go, I need some more eligibility. <laughs> so, I mean, that's, you know, this is what it's like sixth, seventh year. He, he's been a <laughs> ever. Yeah, yeah. It's got it's something like that. Him and him, Lighty and, and Trevor Mabakwe are our Big Ten, <laughs> Big Ten <laughs> life. Um, I kind of want to talk about this because it kind of fits in with that that Midwest five that we kind of talked about a minute ago. I mean, when you come in, especially at Wisconsin, I was going back through your rosters and stats and stuff like that. I mean, very seldomly was there a freshman that got like big time minutes. I think it was Sam, Sam Decker. And even then, um, he wasn't like the main guy. Uh, Mm -hmm. What is it like to come in and and have that expectation that you're like, all right, I'm going to learn how to do this right. And then I'm going to have to wait and get my opportunity somewhere down the line. Um, for me, it was like, I'm not, I'm not a stress. I got, I've always kind of been a person who's like, I think deep down, I think things will work out. You know what I'm saying? Like, or they work out how they're supposed to. So I've never like been stressed about anything like that. And for me, it was like, I came in kind of knowing that I'd have to learn the ropes, but I've also been, you know, confident in my skill. I was also like, well, I mean, obviously, like, to my, if I'm talking to myself, I'm like, well, I mean, yeah, I got to learn the ropes. But obviously, I'm going to play. Like, you know, like, just that. I'm like, whether it's sometimes it might be delusional or whatever, but I'm like, all right. So, you know, it was, it wasn't that hard for me. It was just like, you know, I'm going to go in here, practice. And there were, there were days, I would say, where it was, it was difficult. Cause like, you know, some games I would play 20 minutes and some I would play two. So, um, but it, it was pretty, it was pretty easy. Cause it was just like, honestly, there's no pressure. So no, in, there's no external pressure at all. Like people don't expect anything of you. So all you have to do is really go in there and work. And that's, that's the easiest, like, that's the easiest thing you could do. Cause you could control that yourself. Um, so like, I, I guess I don't know how else to describe it. I just say that there, it was, it was easy. Like, it was just like, there was no pressure. You just go into the gym every day. The hardest thing I think was being, the hardest thing I think was like going from back to the bottom of the totem pole, I think, where it's like, all right, yeah, college or high school. It's natural. You think you're the man, you win state. I won Mr. Basket. I won pretty much every award in Minnesota that you could, that you could think of. So I'm like, shit, you know, I'm going to college. People are, yeah, I'm, I'm the man. And then you get to college and in your mind, you're like, I'm still the man, but you're not. So it's like, it's like you got to, you got to manage your, you got to manage that ego part of it a little bit. But um, no, it was, teammates were great. Like I had Joe Krabenhoff and Marcus Landry were the seniors and, and John Lewis, who I grew up playing against. Um, so it, it was, it was pretty easy, man. It wasn't, it wasn't anything, it wasn't anything crazy. Yeah. And I was going to say, sometimes you have to put your pride aside and, always do his best (laughs) it's like I don't want to keep talking about Purdue but this year the Gatorade player of the year in Indiana last season I mean he's redshirting this year yeah so like I mean it just just goes to show you how 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 different of a level high school to college is and then I mean obviously unless unless you're going to somewhere like Duke or Kentucky or or one of those blue blood schools you're probably not going to go 
one and done and you need to have that expectation like I, obviously everyone wants to go to the nba but it's you know, hard yeah. <laughs> it is hard and i think um you know it's yeah yeah you de you definitely just have it's, it's so many humbling experiences in basketball but at the same time um i think you gain confidence from those humbling experiences as well because you're like shit you know the older you get like oh, i've been through that like I've, I've been there done that you know I've been knocked down to get back up and I'm every, not just basketball. I'm sure you, everybody has their battle scars or whatever it is, but um, you know, you, you go, like I said, I went from in, in high school, I went from, you know, going from AU and I went to uh, LeBron camp and I had like this dude, Dexter Strickland who went to North Carolina. Like my team was like DeMarcus Cousins, Dexter Strickland, uh, <laughs> Scotty Hobson, Lance Stevenson, like my team at the camp was loaded and like, you know, obviously I'm a PG and Lance and Lance and DeMarcus Cousins are like tape, like asking for the ball for me, bringing the ball down the court, coming off ball screens. And I'm like, yo, what in the world? Like, what is this? Like, so, you know, then getting, like I said, getting to Wisconsin and obviously no disrespect, but once you get, once you play around those guys and so you're like, oh, this is, you know, these. I think that's kind of where my overseas thing came from too. Talking about like your, my stereotypes about European guys, like these dudes can't play. Cause I mean, once you play with, you know, Boogie Cousins and LeBron jumped into games at camp, you know, I, I went to Chris Paul camp. He played with us, you know, he had like Jared Jack and all them dudes playing with us. Um, you know, I went to Darren Williams camp. And it's like, once you, once you kind of do all this, so it's kind of like, um, it's, it's a balance between, you know, my high school coach, I always used to say like, there's, there was a saying, I forget exactly what it was, but it's along the lines of like, you know, be confident, but respect your opponent type thing. Mm. And as a young kid, it's like, I completely disrespected my opponent, especially overseas. <laughs> it's just like, when, once you see those guys, it's like, there's like, there ain't nobody better than these dudes, man. Like, who are you? Like, <laughs> so um, that's one thing as I've gotten older, especially overseas, it's like you respect every, every opponent, you know. Cause even in Japan, like there's, there's dudes who are, there's dudes who are five, seven, who absolutely can't play over here that are playing, but you know, there's, we just played a guy who's like a five, seven, five, seven, 26 year old Japanese point guard. And he's crap. Like he's really good. He's crap. He's just small. Um, so, uh, and for me, I'm, I would have never thought that I would have came to Japan playing against a dude who I thought was good at basketball. So, you know, I'm just, that's just the stereotype I had. So it's, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. And I don't want to hold you any longer, but last question. Um, I mean, what games come to mind when you think back to some of those battles that you and you and Wisconsin had back in the day in the Big Ten? Oof, man. Uh, for sure, the Duke game. We played Duke the year they won the national title in the challenge, in Big Ten ACC challenge. Um, and that was fun. Uh, I think I only had like five points, but I just remember – uh, knocking them off was crazy. They had like John Shire and Nolan Smith and all those guys. Uh, and then obviously Ohio State for me was was a kind of like a, a national coming out party uh, for me. So I just you know I, I remember that I remember that day that night vividly. That was that was fun, man. That that'll always be that always be special. Uh, Indiana, uh, of course, uh, like thirty nine. Um, Obviously, the last game you play, the one you we lost to Syracuse, sticks out. So, uh, you know, we ran a play that, uh, you know, to this day, you kind of look, think back, you're like, damn, if we could have ran that. You, it, it's funny because you you think back on these things, you're like, man, if this one little thing would have went different, like how differently would your career be? Maybe it would have been, maybe it wouldn't have been, but it's just one of those rabbit holes you go down sometimes. Um, so, yeah, I would, say, I would say those ones mostly. Uh, Butler, we played Butler the year they we lost in the Sweet 16 when, you know, I think me and John probably shot the worst we ever shot in our life. Uh, <laughs> so or in, in that season, at least. Um, so, yeah, I'd say, I'd say those ones mainly. Um, and I'm sure there's more, but I vividly remember the Duke game. We, I think I had like five points, but it was like late in the game. Mm -hmm. I got a steal. It was like a four on three. And I like faked. I think it was like Nolan Smith. Like he tried to make a no look pass and I jumped the passing lane and I caught it. And I think it was, I can't remember who it was. I, like, I remember feeling like happy in the moment, <laughs> like in the moment I was a sophomore and I was about to throw it up floor and dude, we were up like maybe three and or four or something like that. And dude came from behind me and knocked it back out of my hands, right back to Nolan Smith. And he swung it to Andre Dawkins. He hit a three and it like just took the air out of our arena. Gym. And I was like, fuck. <laughs> I remember going out that night and this dude, uh, 
this dude that was always around, like, hey man, you went from zero, or you went from hero to zero real quick. And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> so it was just just stuff like that, man. You always remember like little moments, but um, yeah, I've I've been fortunate to have a great career or a long career despite injury, and it's uh, I've been blessed. So well, that's yeah. awesome, man. Like I said, I'm gonna wrap this up, but we really appreciate you coming on, taking time to do this, and and being awesome. This was super fun. Thank you, man. I had fun. Appreciate you for having me. Yes, sir. Have a good one. All right, man. You too.